good morning students we'll start with the today's lecture uh, we have started with the unit 3 uh, stability in frequency domain chapter that is nyquist plot right in the previous lecture we have seen the introduction to polar plot and how to draw the polar plot for the given open loop transfer function we have solved few numericals all those things we have studied right okay okay next today we will see the determination of this frequency response specifications that is omega gc omega pc gm pm from the polar plot if i am doing from the polar plot means the same thing holds good for nyquist plot also right okay so all those things we will be studying here omega gc means gain crossover frequency omega pc means phase crossover frequency gain margin and phase margin then uh, we will try to determine the omega pc phase crossover frequency mathematically because omega pc is quite tedious uh, to find out using the graphical method right we will see that right so we'll try to calculate the phase crossover frequency mathematically how to do it we'll see then next how to determine the stability from polar plot if i am doing from polar plot i can do it from nyquist plot also the same thing right then why we go for nyquist plot for stability analysis when there is polar plot what are the drawbacks of polar plot that also we will see then why we'll switch to nyquist plot right okay first we will take up this we will try to find out omega gc and omega pc in polar plot polar plot means it is as good as the nyquist plot only right so what this okay okay i'll not confuse you people just we'll try to find out gain crossover frequency and phase screen polar plot right okay fine you can observe here uh, the, let me take one uh, example here this is the polar plot omega equal to zero the plot moves like this from omega equal to zero this is the polar plot don't worry about all the circles everything just concentrate what step by step i will go concentrate whatever i am telling right okay omega equal to zero the frequency goes on increasing the polar plot moves like this and at omega equal to infinity so the polar plot will touch here right so this is the starting frequency omega equal to zero and this is the terminating point omega equal to infinity and this is the polar plot it moves like this right then how to find out omega gc and omega similarly the second figure this is figure one right figure a figure b right similarly here another polar plot is there in figure b you can observe here here omega equal to zero and this is omega equal to terminating point the polar plot will move like this right and it will join here this is the polar plot right okay let me assume this is the polar plot polar plot can be in any shape right i am assuming this is the polar plot right now and how to find out omega gc and omega pc i will tell you right first i want to find out gain crossover frequency we know that the characteristic equation right 1 plus g of s into h of s equal to 0 right which implies g of s into h of s is equal to minus 1 minus 1 i can write it as minus 1 plus j 0 right no problem replace s by j omega g of in frequency domain g of j omega into h of j omega that is equal to minus 1 plus j 0 right so if i take the magnitude of g of j omega into h of j omega it is 1 right so let me write it here magnitude of j of j omega into h of j omega so if i take the magnitude right so under root of uh, 1 square plus 0 square so it is magnitude is 1 right then what about the phase tan inverse of minus 1 plus j 0 where it comes it comes on the negative real axis so it is minus 180 degree the phase right so the angle of g of j omega into h of j omega is equal to minus 180 degree is it fine because the point comes here minus 1 plus j 0 it is my minus 180 degree if i measure like this right sorry if i measure like this minus 180 degree right i hope you are getting okay but here uh, the magnitude values will not be taking in decibel so we will take that the magnitude of j of j omega and h of j omega equal to 1 if i take it in mag uh, decibels so 20 log 1 it will be 0 decibels but we usually measure the magnitude simply like that we will not take it in decibels for the polar plot right so we know that the magnitude of j of j omega and h of j omega is equal to 1 right corresponding to 0 decibels at omega equal to omega gc in order to get the okay gain crossover frequency we will use the magnitude condition right from polar plot so we know that magnitude of j of j omega and h of j omega equal to 1 right so we will draw the unit circle having the magnitude of 1 so so we will mark here 0 minus 1 plus j 0 right this is the point 
it is marked here minus 1 plus j0 so keep your compass at the origin and magnitude is 1 right this point is minus 1 plus j0 right okay uh, you take compass and draw the circle here dotted circle right or else circle simply lightly draw the circle i hope you can observe this is the unit circle having unit radius because g of g omega and h of g omega equal to 1 the magnitude is 1 right so draw the unit circle so this unit circle is intersecting the polar plot at point p the unit circle is intersecting the polar plot at point p observe here right at point p so this frequency wherever the polar plot is intersecting the unit circle this uh, frequency we call it as gain crossover frequency omega gc i hope you got it the polar plot intersects the unit circle at point p and this point will give me the frequency the that corresponding frequency we call it as gain crossover frequency omega gc i hope you understood right yes so we came to know what is gain crossover frequency from figure a similarly go to figure b draw the unit circle once again here this is the unit circle we are drawing and the polar plot you can observe here it is intersecting here at point p this is the point p so the corresponding frequency we call it as gain crossover frequency omega equal to omega gc just you can observe here the difference between figure a and figure b so you can observe here the polar plot it is here and this polar plot is not uh, enclosing this minus 1 plus j minus 1 plus j 0 is outside this polar plot in the figure b you can observe here this polar plot is including minus 1 plus j 0 means the polar when minus 1 plus j 0 is inside the polar plot here that is the difference between this figure a and figure b right i am taking some polar plots here this polar plot is not enclosing this minus 1 plus j 0 point whereas in figure b this polar plot is enclosing minus 1 plus j 0 point that's all the difference between two figures right so corresponding to that we came to know how to find out the gain crossover frequency omega gc right then next how to find out the phase crossover frequency you can observe here the polar plot is this for polar plot sorry for phase crossover frequency the reference is minus 180 degrees so this is minus 180 degrees the reference line right so the polar plot is intersecting at point q the minus uh, intersecting minus 180 degree reference line at point q and corresponding frequency we call it as omega pc that is phase crossover frequency at this point q the angle of g of g omega and h of g omega is equal to minus 180 degree at this point the angle is minus 180 degree i hope you are getting right yes so the angle of g of g omega and h of g omega equal to minus 180 right so whenever the polar plot intersects the minus 180 degree reference line that point q right and the corresponding frequency at point q we call it as phase crossover frequency so please uh, i will be using standard notation p for gain crossover frequency i will make intersection point i will call it as p and for intersection of uh, polar plot with the negative real axis this is negative real axis right so i'll call it as q which will give me phase crossover frequency the same thing here also you can observe here the polar plot is intersecting negative real axis at this point q and corresponding frequency is phase crossover frequency and angle is minus 180 degree there so we came to know uh, how to find out gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency gain crossover frequency draw the unit circle the intersection of unit circle and polar plot will give me the gain crossover frequency at point p and the intersection of polar plot with the negative real axis this is negative real axis right they will give me the point q that is phase crossover frequency that's all right two statements i have made if any doubts please unmute at any point and you ask me so that i can clarify your doubts and this point minus 1 plus j0 we call it as critical point i will tell you in the nyquist or polar plot we call this minus 1 plus j0 as critical point because g right just now i told g of g omega to h of g omega to minus 1 plus j0 minus 1 plus j0 plays a very vital role this point we call it as a critical point right whether that point is enclosed by the polar plot or outside the polar plot that will see based on that we will judge the stability of the system right so we call this minus 1 plus j0 point as the critical point okay you can see here minus 1 j of j omega into h of j omega equal to minus 1 plus j0 this is the critical point i told right so this is the real axis sigma imaginary axis j omega and my let me look at here minus 1 plus j0 right if i take the magnitude what is the magnitude it is one from here to here magnitude right so it is one so this is the magnitude magnitude is one what is the angle if i measure 
here right if i measure like this it is minus 180 degree if i measure in clockwise direction i will be getting minus so magnitude what is the magnitude it is one angle is minus 180 so magnitude at an angle of phi m and phi what is the magnitude it is one and what is the angle it is minus 180 degree so this either the point minus one plus j zero or the magnitude one and minus 180 degree we call it as critical point please keep in the mind critical point for the polar float right so just i have written here just i will read it instability determination magnitude of j of j omega and h of j omega is equal to one and angle of j of j omega and h of j omega equal to minus 180 degree this only i told right one and minus a uh, minus 180 degree and they play a very important role in judging the stability of the system this point that is one at an angle of minus 180 degree is nothing but this it is nothing but this point right one at an angle of minus 180 degree is nothing but this point right so this point is on the negative real axis yes it is on the negative real axis and this we call it as critical point critical point in polar plot also in nyquist plot also right please keep in the mind whether this critical point is enclosed by the polar plot whether it is outside the polar plot based on that we will try to judge the stability of the system you can observe here here in figure a minus one plus j zero you can if i draw the polar plot like this it is outside to the left to the left of it to the left of the polar plot it is outside if i consider figure b we can observe here uh, the polar plot is enclosing this minus one plus j zero point right it is on the right side right if it is on the left side it is outside if it is on the right side it is enclosing right so based on that whether it is enclosing or not enclosing we will try to judge the stability of the system right that we'll see further next next we have seen uh, how to find out uh, omega gc and omega pc from the polar plot next we will see the determination of one minute there is my okay Let, next we will see the determination of gain margin and phase margin from the polar plot it is as good as it applies for nyquist plot also so we are studying only for polar plot means it, it is equally applicable for nyquist plot next what we are going to study all right so we know this we already defined what is gain margin in the in the case of board plot right so it is a margin in the gain that can be introduced in the system till the system reaches on the verge of instability and we know the definition the same thing uh, it is not a new thing we already seen this gain margin is one divided by magnitude of g of g omega and h of g omega at omega equal to omega pc so we are making use of omega equal to omega pc phase crossover frequency in order to calculate gain margin please keep in the mind right okay then okay fine we'll find out gain margin gm is equal to 1 by what is this magnitude of g of g omega and h of g omega at omega equal to omega pc means it is nothing but the intersection point q right so omega equal to omega pc where it is will come so omega equal to omega pc will come at point q right this one right so what is that it is length oq o to q this distance o to q is it fine yes magnitude of what is the magnitude from here to here till this is right at this point q we are getting phase crossover frequency so what is the magnitude of g of g omega and h of g omega it is length of oq right so they are taking so magnitude of g of g omega and h of g omega at omega equal to omega pc is length of o, length from o to q i hope you are getting right why we are taking length from o to q so please keep in the mind p in the intersection point p gives me omega equal to omega g is again crossover frequency the intersection point q gives me the phase crossover frequency omega pc please keep in the mind right so at omega equal to omega pc means right it will give me the phase crossover frequency and in the diagram i show it is it is here q so what is the magnitude of g of it is length from o to q so they have written here length from o to q so this is the gain margin if I want the gain margin to be calculated in decibels, take 20 log of this thing. So the next we are doing in decibels, 20 log of 1 by length from O to Q means nothing but magnitude of O to Q. Right? Magnitude from O to Q. So magnitude from O to Q, point O to point Q. So this is in decibels. So I hope you are getting. Next, phase margin is also not new thing. We have already defined and we know this formula in case of board plot. I have explained this right. So phase margin is 180 degree plus angle of G of G omega and H of G omega at omega equal to omega GC. Observe here. In order to calculate phase margin, we are make, taking the help of gain crossover frequency, right? Okay, this is the formula. 
ओके डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ गेन मार्जिन एंड फेज मार्जिन फ्रॉम पोलर प्लॉट विल सी हाउ टू कैलकुलेट गेन मार्जिन एंड फेज मार्जिन राइट ओके यस ऑलरेडी वी नो द फॉर्मूला राइट वन मिनट ओके हाउ टू कैलकुलेट गेन मार्जिन दिस इज द फॉर्मूला If I if it is in terms of decibels, so if I want to calculate gain margin, one divided by length of O Q, measure the length from O to Q. What is Q? Q is intersection of polar plot with negative real axis. So measure this. You will get some value. Take twenty log of that value. It will be in decibels. So G M may be positive or negative, right? Those stability conditions will study. Next, how to calculate phase margin? That is very important, right? So whatever the polar plot we are drawing, it should be to the scale. Means minus one plus j is zero. Normal graph you to take it. If if it is uh, actually it is not required, but if I want to calculate gain margin and phase margin from the plot, so from the plot, so the it has to be to the scale. Means I have to make use of graph sheet, right? So minus one plus j is zero is there. What is this intersection point that should be calculated? And I should mark it and I should draw this polar plot. Next, how to find out phase margin? Okay. It is at omega equal to omega G C, where that omega equal to omega G C will come. The polar plot is intersecting this unit circle here, this point P. Omega equal to omega G C point is here, right? So, so minus 180 degree is the reference line, right? From this minus 180 degree, so join. See, here, observe the intersection at omega equal to omega G C. We will get the intersection point P, right? So from origin to this point P, join this line, right? And minus 180 degree is the reference line. From this, you measure the angle. This will give me the phase margin. This angle. Don't worry about this angle. Leave that. We will discard this. So phase margin. If I measure the phase angle below this reference line, it is positive. Just observe here. Uh, don't uh, can get confused with the uh, uh, board plot. Right? Phase margin. If I measure above this minus 180 degree line, it was positive. And here it was negative. It is exactly opposite here. If I measure the angle below this, right? Below this uh, minus 180 degree reference line, it is positive, right? Below it is positive. The next observe in the second case, uh, omega equal to omega is wherever the polar plot intersects this unit circle. Point P is there. From origin to point P, join this, right? And this is minus 180 degrees the reference line, and measure this angle here. And this angle, since we are measuring above, it is negative. Please keep in the mind. Or else, another one easy thing I will tell you. Observe here. Point P, I will get some frequency omega equal to omega GC and frequency is go goes on increase omega equal to zero omega equal to one two three and omega equal to infinity. The frequency goes on increasing here if I go like this, right? So omega GC I am getting here. At point Q I am getting omega PC. Observe here omega GC is less than omega PC in this case. Omega GC is less than omega PC. I have written here omega GC is less than omega PC. Gain margin and phase margin are positive, so the system is stable. The same thing, whatever we have studied there, stability conditions here also they apply. Omega G C is less than omega P C, G M and P M. So no need to remember. See here, if omega G C is less than omega P C, this P M has to be positive. Phase margin, whatever you measure the angle, it has to be positive, right? So omega G C is less than omega P C. Gain margin and phase margin are positive. System is stable, right? Next, in second case, you can observe here. Point P, I am getting omega G C here and omega P C here. So if I start from a starting point, omega equal to the frequency goes on increasing. So here I am getting omega P C and omega G C. Omega G C is greater here. Omega G C is greater than omega P C. Whenever omega G C is greater than omega P C, both G M and P M are uh, negative. Negative. So if I measure angle, this should be negative angle only, right? No need to remember the sign convention also. So if omega G C is greater than omega P C, G M and P M are negative. System is unstable. Please try to remember the stability conditions. We know already, right? Okay. Uh, actually, we will not uh, draw this uh, polar plot to the scale. Roughly, we will draw it. So we go for uh, mathematical calculation of omega P C, not for uh, not from the diagram. How to calculate this omega P C intersection? We will do it mathematically, not by using the graph, right? So that next we'll see. The same thing has been told here. In practice, polar plot is required to be drawn precisely and to the scale, right? So we don't prefer. So we go for mathematical uh, uh, determination of omega P C. That we'll see next, right? Yes, determining omega P C mathematically. So the same diagrams, figure A, figure B. You know already we're familiar with these two figures, right? 
okay how to find out omega pc that is very important right but we will not go for graph just okay graph i will take just this polar plot is intersecting negative real axis at this point q and this point q will give me omega equal to omega pc right so this value will give me right but how to calculate this omega pc value exactly what is the frequency here i want to calculate right so we will do it mathematically how to do it we'll see next here also the polar plot is intersecting negative real axis in this case right so how to find out we'll see one and the same and one more thing you can observe observe here the polar plot is intersecting negative real axis at this point q so it has some coordinates let me call that coordinate as minus sigma plus j0 right right real plus imaginary imagine there is no imaginary because it is intersecting the negative real axis imaginary part is zero so plus j0 l right minus sigma plus j0 maybe minus 0.5 plus j0 something like that minus 0.6 minus 0.7 something like that. in this case it is minus 1 is here so it is greater than minus means minus 1.5 minus 2 plus j0 minus 3 plus j0 something like that right so we have to calculate those coordinates also we will see how to calculate the frequency omega pc and the coordinate of this point q here in both the cases so the steps are as follows so we will make use of these steps and we will solve one problem next right okay okay how to do this uh, how to determine the omega pc mathematically without looking at the graph right okay first rationalize the open loop transfer function j of j omega into h of j omega suppose how to rationalize i'll tell you let me assume that j of j omega into h of j omega is equal to 1 by j omega into 1 plus uh, st j omega t something like this it is there let me take it right right suppose this is the transfer function how to rationalize it so j omega 0 plus j omega l right right so 0 minus j omega right 0 minus j omega 1 plus j omega t 1 minus j omega t i hope you are you know how to rationalize right 0 plus j omega is there so 0 minus j omega will be taking right exactly opposite if i so i will take in both numerator as well as denominator so it mathematically it should be correct 1 plus j omega t 1 minus j omega t 1 minus j omega t you multiply and do all those things right rationalization that will so rationalize the given open loop transfer function first then separate the real and imaginary parts okay you multiply do all these things finally real part should be separate real part plus j of imaginary part imaginary part it should be separate like this x plus j y so first rationalize it separate into real and imaginary parts right then next equate imaginary part to zero because why equate to imaginary part to zero means at this point q you can observe the coordinates are minus sigma plus j zero what about imaginary part here it is zero right imaginary part is zero so equate imaginary part to zero right so we are equating imaginary part to zero and we will calculate the corresponding frequency omega equal to omega pc and whatever the after equating this imaginary part to zero we get real part and imaginary part we will equate this imaginary part to zero and we will calculate the phase cross over frequency omega equal to omega pc and this frequency should be always it should be positive it should be finite and greater than zero please keep in the mind right if it is not positive if it is negative or if it is infinite or if it, if it is negative then there is no intersection of polar plot with negative real axis if omega equal to omega pc is positive finite and greater than zero then only the polar plot will intersect the negative real axis here here this polar plot is intersecting this negative real axis right but if omega pc is other than suppose if it is negative then there is no intersection of polar plot with negative real axis it will not intersect right that is the thing then fourth step okay in the third step you have calculated this omega pc but we have calculated this frequency but i want to know the coordinates of this point so substitute this value of omega pc in the real part whatever the real part we got substitute this value of omega pc in the real part and get the coordinates we will get the coordinates means with these coordinates of point q minus sigma what is this value we are going to calculate real part right we will see solve one numerical you will understand all these four steps right next stability determination from polar plot already the stability conditions we know uh, in case of board plot the same thing holds good here also 
if omega gc is less than omega pc gm and pm are positive system is stable we know this if omega gc is greater than omega pc gm and pm are negative system is unstable if omega gc is equal to omega pc gm and pm are zero so system is marginally stable this is fine these three stability conditions already we know right here uh, in the diagram you can see here here in this case omega gc is here omega pc is here in this case omega gc is less than omega pc you take the second diagram uh, omega pc is here and omega gc is there right omega gc is greater than omega pc okay whenever omega gc is less than omega pc what happens gm and pm are positive gm and pm are positive positive and system is stable this we know whenever omega gc is greater than omega pc gain margin and phase margin are negative system is unstable this is one way of telling it another way i will tell you where how, how system is stable and unstable how to judge it see here this is the critical point minus one plus j zero observe here let me round this critical point right let me write it critical point critical point here i have critical point here located right critical point the system is said to be stable if the polar plot do not enclose this minus one plus j zero critical point see here the polar plot is not a cover enclosing this minus one because minus one plus j zero is outside the polar plot this point is outside the polar plot means if the point lies on the left then it is not enclosing this critical point hence the system is stable suppose you can observe in the diagram b or figure b the polar plot minus one plus j zero is here the polar plot is enclosing it is enclosing the polar plot is enclosing means it is encircling right the polar plot is enclosing this minus one plus j zero critical point hence given system is unstable one thing i to, i we should make, make a conclusion if the polar plot encloses this critical point system is unstable if it does not enclose then system is stable if the polar plot encloses this critical point system is unstable if it does not enclose it is stable please keep in mind based on this omega gc omega p those values also i can tell just by looking also i can tell here the polar plot is not enclosing this critical point so given system is stable if it encloses it is unstable please keep in mind okay fine i hope you got it my intention what i am telling the next third case first case is over second third case omega gc is equal to omega pc at that time gain margin and phase margin is zero and so system is marginally stable when this omega gc will be equal to omega pc what is the diagram what changes i have to make in the diagram this is for omega gc less than omega pc figure b for omega gc greater than omega pc for next i will change the ink color uh, c for omega gc equal to omega pc what's how the polar plot should be there right so here just i will draw here you can observe here for omega gc equal to omega pc i am drawing here for one i will not draw for all yes let me take it. right this is the polar plot you can observe here this polar plot is intersecting this unit circle here i am getting p right p means p means omega equal to omega gc and this my polar plot is intersecting negative real axis that is q so p is equal to q here means p equal to q means omega equal to omega gc this third case right so both p and q are same here p and q are different here right here p is equal to q whenever the polar plot crosses this negative real axis at the unit circle right it is intersecting both unit circle as well as reference line so at this here in this case uh, let me draw it here uh, minus one plus j zero point is here here minus one plus j zero point is there let me draw it draw the polar plot and explain you yes so p is equal to q here at the third case omega gc equal to omega p same I hope you are getting for both figure and figure B. I have shown uh, omega GC equal to omega PC. At that time, what will happen to gain margin and phase margin? They are zero. Gain margin and phase margin are zero. And given system is marginally stable.
is it clear right stability condition if point critical point is not enclosed stable if critical point is enclosed unstable next why we go for nyquist plot right that we'll study already we have seen several things about polar plot instead of having polar plot we are, we are switching to nyquist plot what is the reason we'll tell you. why we go for nyquist plot for stability analysis so i told minus one plus j zero this is the critical point minus one plus j zero is we call it as critical point okay minus one plus j zero if it is enclosed okay one of you answer minus one plus j zero if it is enclosed by polar plot enclosed by polar plot system is stable or unstable if this critical point if it is enclosed by the polar plot whether the system is stable or unstable one of you answer unstable sir. unstable good unstable because if it encloses it is unstable minus 1 plus j0 if it is not enclosed not enclosed then system is stable these things we know but here this case you, uh, one more case we'll take the critical point is here but you can observe the polar plot here it is going here and it is coming like this see if the point minus 1 plus j0 was here it is outside right it is not enclosing if it is not enclosing system would have been stable if the point minus 1 plus j0 suppose the polar plot is like this then it is enclosing but this case especially this case whatever we are taking this is special case what we are taking special case you can observe i cannot say whether this is enclosed or not enclosed and in this case the polar plot will fail the polar plot is unable to judge the stability of these uh, kind of systems whenever the critical point you can say here the polar plot is going like this and it is coming like this I don't know whether it is enclosed or not enclosed. If the point is here, minus one, then I will say it is not enclosed. But I cannot say if it is here, I cannot say it is not enclosed or it is enclosed. So in this type of cases, the polar plot fails. At that, so the next uh, uh, is taken, it is taken care by Nyquist plot. That's what we are going to study next. So minus one plus J zero here, it is neither enclosed nor outside. We don't know. We cannot tell anything about this uh, whether it is enclosed or not enclosed, we cannot tell anything if the point lies here, critical point. So at that time, we go for Nyquist plot. So what is that Nyquist plot? All those things we'll study next, right? And one more thing, this uh, polar plot is the basis for Nyquist plot, right? What all the things we have studied for polar plot, they are equally applicable for Nyquist plot, right? So we are stressing a lot on polar plot because if I know the nature, then everything whatever we have studied it is equally holds good for Nyquist plot right and whatever the discussion we have done with respect to calculation of gain margin phase margin and intersection of polar plot with negative rail axis all are equally good for Nyquist plot no need to study once again how to calculate gain margin phase margin uh, intersection point of polar plot with uh, negative rail axis because it is equally good it applies for Nyquist plot whatever we have studied for polar plot it applies for Nyquist plot also right so whenever we are unable to judge whether the point is enclosed or not enclosed at that time the polar plot fails so we shift our focus our attention for nyquist plot that's all when one line i have told right so remaining things you read it so that the same thing whatever i told it is there you read it right okay next we'll take up this last numerical and we'll wind up this today's lecture <coughs> okay sketch the rough nature of polar plot it is asked to color, uh, uh, plot the polar plot, not Nyquist plot, we don't know, right? Sketch the rough nature of polar plot for a system with G of S into H of S is equal to 10 divided by S into S plus 1 into S plus 2. Calculates its, uh, calculates its gain margin in decibels, hence comment on its stability. So we'll do all those things. But you can observe here, okay, how the polar plot will be looking like. Let me go to the previous uh, one blank slide. G of S into H of S, they have given this 10 divided by s yes into s plus 1 uh, one minute into s plus 2 okay you can observe here 
uh, I can take two common one plus T1s, one plus T2s. For example, we know the polar plot for this G of S, but without uh, using the steps and drawing the polar plot, I will I can guess how the polar plot will look like. That risk, uh, I will tell you how to do that. But we have to follow the step and do it. But we'll do it before doing this, solving this problem. I will tell you how the polar plot will look for this uh, given open loop transfer function, right? So G of S into H of S. We know this 1 divided by 1 plus T S, right? So for this, what was the polar plot? Sigma J omega 0 degree minus 90 minus 180 minus 270. So for this 1, 1 divided by 1 plus T S, the starting point was here. This was the polar plot. If you remember, right? Yesterday we have seen, right? So this is for omega equal to 0 and this is omega equal to infinity and 90 degree clockwise rotation 90 degree clockwise okay 1 divided by 1 plus ts this is there if i add 1 0 to this so i am adding pole at origin right so let me take the effect of this letter so 1 divided by 1 plus ts next we know g of s into h of s is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus ts i am adding one pole at origin yes what will happen to the plot so the plot will shift like this i will use the same so if I add pole at origin, so the starting point of the polar plot will shift by how many 90 degree, right? Already one, it is 90 degree, another 90 degree gets added, right? So it will, the starting point gets shifted by 90 degree. Here it is 0 degree, 90 degree means here, right? In clockwise direction, that too important, right? From clockwise direction. So here starting point is omega equal to 0 and terminating point omega equal to infinity remains the same. So 90 degree clockwise rotation. So this is for this, right? So let me mark, this is for green color, right? This is the polar plot. If I add one pole at the origin, the starting point of the polar plot gets shifted by 90 degree in the clockwise direction. If there are two poles, S square, 180, 90 degree, 90 degree means polar plot will come like this. Okay, next, this these two terms we have taken care. One more simple pole let us add. G of S, so let me change the ink color. g of s into h of s is equal to 1 divided by this we have seen already s into 1 plus t s uh, let me call it as t1 s i will add one more simple pole for this 1 plus t2 s uh, this these two are looking same now right so i am adding one more simple pole so what will happen now this is fine so if i add one more simple pole what will happen the starting point remains the same the plot will rotate by 90 90 180 degree right so the plot will change like this starting point remains the same this is the polar plot 90 degree clockwise is added here 90 degree clockwise and another 90 degree clockwise because 90 by this 90 by this 90 90 180 right so 90 degree clockwise so finally for this uh, open loop transfer function whatever they have given the polar plot will come like this purple color whatever I have drawn so this is the polar final polar plot I am drawing here sigma j omega 0 degree minus 90 degree minus 180 minus 270 so the polar plot will look like this so omega equal to 0 omega equal to infinity so this is what i should get roughly i have told you right we know because we know the polar plot for standard factors if i add pole at origin one pole at origin two pole at if i add simple pole all those nature we have studied yesterday so for this problem i should get the polar plot like this i should get the polar plot like this right i have the idea next we'll proceed so we'll solve this problem g of s into h of s is replace s by j omega g of j omega to h of j omega 10 by so s is j omega right you search, replace it then first calculate the magnitude so magnitude m is equal to let me change the ink color magnitude m is equal to magnitude j so magnitude of 10 is 10 magnitude of 0 plus j omega under root of 0 square plus omega square is omega so under root of 1 square plus omega square here under root of 2 square plus omega square 2 square is 4 right this is magnitude m this is magnitude m is over next calculate the angle phase 5 angle of g of j omega and h of j omega ah, okay calculate the angle angle of 10 is 0 degree angle of omega means omega 
sorry this i should not take i should refer this i should refer this angle of 10 is 0 degree right the next angle of j omega 0 plus j omega it is lying on imaginary axis so from this will contribute 90 degree so i have written here 90 degree right this is over so 10 0 degree next tan inverse of omega by 1 right this is over tan inverse of omega by 2 this one right so take it to numerator minus 90 degree minus tan inverse of omega minus tan this is phase right this is magnitude m and this is phase phi over so we know what is magnitude and what is phase now we will take the starting point of frequency and the terminating point of frequency we will not take all the frequencies only starting point of frequency omega equal to 0 and terminating point of frequency omega equal to infinity so starting point omega equal to 0 and terminating point omega equal to infinity so we will calculate magnitude and phase omega is 0 so calculate magnitude if omega is 0 here anything divided by 0 is infinity so magnitude is infinity then substitute omega equal to 0 and phase equation so minus 90 tan inverse of 0 is 0 this is 0 minus 90 minus 0 minus 0 so it is minus 90 degree so this is magnitude is infinity angle is minus 90 degree then substitute omega equal to infinity in magnitude equation so anything divided by infinity is 0 so magnitude is 0 over next substitute omega equal to infinity in this uh, phase equation tan inverse of infinity this is 90 degree this is 90 minus 90 minus 90 minus 90 so minus 270 so minus 270 i hope you are getting right then the rotation of the plot so you subtract like this from here to here minus 270 minus of minus 90 so it is minus 180 degree so we are getting negative means the plot the plot will rotate by plot will ro rotate by 180 degree in which direction in clockwise because it is negative clockwise measure uh, direction we take it as negative right in clockwise direction polar plot well, let me write polar plot only. polar plot will rotate by 180 degree in clockwise direction right or simply they have written clockwise it is understood right okay next we have all this data let me draw it here but they are, they are doing some other thing we will do it later let me draw the polar plot here with all this data i will change the ink color sigma j omega 0 degree minus 90 minus 180 minus 270 okay omega equal to 0 what is magnet and what is the angle minus 90 degree minus 90 degree means this one right so it is infinity i will take infinity some people will take here means some people i'll assume that it will meet at infinity and i'll take here some people what they will do they will never meet because i can so they, some people will take here both are fine i can set starting point here or here no problem so let me take it here only and i'll show you both okay i'll take for omega equal to zero so magnitude is infinity from here to here i'll take this as infinity but some people will not take on this uh, imaginary axis they will take it here because they will never meet it is at infinity i cannot show that infinity so instead of showing here they will show here right that is one and the fine so minus 90 degree infinity but this is minus 90 degree right and infinity is here so this is for omega then terminating point so angle is minus 270 minus 270 is this line it is zero so this is for omega equal to infinity and what is the rotation of the plot it is 180 degree in clockwise direction so 90 90 180 right in clockwise direction so 90 90 180 so i am getting this polar plot and you can observe here the polar plot is intersecting negative real axis at this point this is point q right so what this will give me it will give me omega equal to omega pc phase crossover frequency right and what is this intersection point i have to find out minus sigma plus j0 i don't know what is this so let us calculate this sigma how to calculate mathematically that we see so what they are telling here now before sketching the polar plot let us find out its intersection point with negative real axis means this one point q we have to find out after finding point q we will draw it to scale that is their intention so they are not drawn they are drawing next after calculation of this intersection point so intersection point of polar plot with negative real axis is q which will give me the corresponding frequency phase crossover frequency omega equal to omega pc and the coordinates of that point q are minus sigma plus j0 so we want to find out the coordinates where it is intersecting so we will find out so how to find out that determination of omega pc mathematically we know that right so here it is there right 
so rationalize first rationalize so i cannot show you here so let me go to the next slide okay here it is there g of j omega and h of j omega equal to 10 divided by this so let, let me rationalize here i'll write it here g of j omega into h of j omega is equal to 10 divided by j omega into 1 plus j omega into 2 plus j omega so how to rationalize let us see here so 0 plus j omega means i'll take 0 minus j omega divided right so 1 plus j omega means 1 minus j omega 2 plus j omega means 2 minus j omega take the same factors in the denominator so that i am getting back the mathematically it should not be affected 1 minus j omega 2 minus j omega right we have to rationalize so rationalize is like this so they have written here you can see here 10 minus j omega 1 minus j omega 2 minus j omega 0 minus j omega, right in the numerator denominator j omega into 0 j omega into minus j omega 1 plus j omega into 1 minus j omega they have written like this right i hope you are getting so rationalize g of j omega and h of j omega okay we are rationalizing and multiply multiply and separate into real part and imaginary part so we are I will show you in the Nyquist plot. Right now I am not doing calculations. Just you know that. Right. Just multiply. One more thing while multiplying. Please remember. J into J. That is J square. J square is minus 1. Please keep in the mind. Whenever I come across multiplication of J into J. It is J square. J square is minus 1. Please keep in the mind. So using that we multiply. So they are multiplying. This is real part and this is imaginary part. J plus something. Right. Imaginary part. Imaginary real part. And imaginary part so g of j omega first we will rationalize after rationalizing this is real part and this is imaginary part this denominator omega square into 1 plus omega square 4 plus they are calling it as d instead of writing this so d is they have written here what is this d d is nothing but this denominator this one right right okay real part and imaginary part and you can observe the polar plot is intersecting this negative real axis here so it has the imaginary part is zero so equate this imaginary part this one to zero so we are equating equating imaginary part to zero right equating imaginary part to zero at omega equal to omega pc so equate this 10 imaginary part means 10 omega 2 minus omega square this d will leave because if it goes that side it will be zero so 10 omega 2 minus omega square equal to zero equate it equating imaginary part to zero imaginary part is equated to zero that is 10 omega into 2 minus this is imaginary part right so leave this j 10 omega into 2 minus omega square equal to 0 then calculate this uh, frequency omega equal to omega pc here from this from this what i can write omega equal to 0 and 2 minus omega square equal to 0 omega equal to 0 and 2 minus omega square equal to 0 this they have written here from this omega square equal to 2 and omega equal to root so omega can take either value 0 or root 2 but we know that omega should be always positive positive finite and greater than zero but if i take zero it is not great so we will discard this we will not take this we will not take this because it is less than zero it is zero right so it should be positive finite and so i will be choosing this so omega equal to omega pc and that is equal to root 2 radians per second so since it has to be positive finite and greater than zero it is satisfying so omega pc is root 2 we have found out and i want to find out the coordinates of this point q where it is intersecting we have found out the cross, uh, phase crossover frequency that is root 2 here substitute this omega equal to omega pc that is root 2 in real part real part is this one this one real part we'll substitute in this minus 30 omega square divided by d is nothing but this one right so substitute that value of omega equal to omega pc that is root 2 in real part substituting in real part we get so at omega equal to omega pc minus 30 omega square omega square root 2 square is 2 then d what is d d is omega square into 1 plus omega square omega square is root 2 whole square plus 1 1 plus omega square right you are getting substituted see imaginary part is not required only real part right only take real part right substitute of uh, this value of omega pc in real part this is real part real part at omega equal to omega pc so we will get minus 1.66 means this is the coordinate it is intersecting at minus 1.66 then what about the critical point it should come inside because minus 1.66 means critical point will come here minus 1 plus j0 
polar plot is enclosing this here the polar plot is enclosing this uh, critical point so system is unstable this is one way of telling or else we'll find out gain margin we know how to find out gain margin that also we'll see next right i hope you are getting this what i told so this is the coordinate of point q that is what is the coordinate of point q the coordinates of point q are minus 1.66 imaginary part is zero so minus 1.66 plus j0 so polar plot is shown here i told no some people will not take uh, omega equal to zero on this they will be taking here no problem you can join it assuming that it will meet or else you can show it by just parallel to this you take this omega equal to zero right it is goes like this this is for omega equal to infinity and critical point minus one plus j zero is here intersection point q we have found out minus 1.66 so join it like this yes yes we came to know that since the polar plot is enclosing this critical point so given system is unstable and if it is here it is asked to find out gain margin also calculate the gain margin in decibels right so we try to calculate gain margin we know the formula gain margin is equal to 1 by magnitude of oq this is o o to q this magnitude right from here to here so 1 by magnitude of oq is 1 by 1.6 take the magnitude don't take minus it is magnitude of minus 1.6 is 1.6 so 1 divided by 1.6 is 0.6 so calculate in decibels in db so 20 log of this 0.6 so minus 4 so we are getting negative it has to be negative only because we know that it's already unstable means gm has to be negative minus 4.43 decibels so since gain margin is negative and critical point is enclosed so given system is unstable right okay uh, I, I hope you understood i'll stop recording and we'll continue with nyquist plot analysis tomorrow